Even before I left Berkeley, I had made a decision to pursue a career as an educator. I taught for about 12, 13 years. Then I finally decided I wanted to go on the road and tour. One day, I got a call from a good friend of mine, Jeff Gittleman, who's also a Berkeley grad. He was like, hey man, can you come to New York tomorrow to play a gig with Alicia Keys? I didn't get the message until after school hours, and by the time I called him back, he had already found somebody else. That kind of put things in perspective for me. I realized I had to make a choice, so 2013, I said, you know what, I'm gonna give this a shot. Early retire from Boston Public Schools and see what the future holds as a full-time touring musician. Growing up in Barbados has influenced my approach to music. If you listen to the music of the Caribbean, it's very diatonic. The melodies are very singable. So when I write, I write the same way. You know, something with a, a groove. You get that tropical syncopated vibe with the you know, calypsos and reggaes and even Afro-Cuban rhythms. I think jazz is going to be around for a long time because of those artists who have made a commitment to keep jazz relevant and keep it evolving. You have artists like Corey Henry and Esperanza Spaulding, you know, Snarky Puppy. So some of these younger kids are like, whoa, they're playing some heavy stuff, you know, they're improvising, but they're making it look like something that I might want to do. I think I'm always going to be an educator. I started my own foundation in Barbados to do my part to make sure instruments are readily accessible for students, even if they can't afford it, make sure that kids have an opportunity to experience some kind of music, some kind of expression. And if we can just reach one kid that can be the next Elon Trotman, you know, we've achieved our goal, giving the kid an opportunity to consider being a full-time musician, a music teacher, a producer, a composer when they become adults.